Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Bobby Sapphire. Today we are checking out my new favorite deck, Chewbacca. What a Wookiee. Uh, this deck was, of course, inspired by Sarna, who played it at the Super Showdown in Poland. I've gotten over 40 games with the deck now. I've only lost four of them. Let's check it out. Okay, this list comes to us from the Poland Super Showdown uh, last week. And shout out to Sarna for rocking Chewbacca. What a dude. Uh, this is a unit, and sorry, this is a leader that has not seen a lot of play, is continually considered one of the worst, if not the worst. And Sarna rocked him anyway and made the top eight. And I've been running this deck, and it's just been a monster. Um, I started running this as is and then quickly made some pretty obvious changes. And what I want to do is take a look at the cards like grouped up so we're going to do that in this video let's dig deep all right let's take a look at the ground units here um sarna has opted for r2d2 mon mothma battlefield marine r2 and mon mothma in addition to akbar who comes out the next turn only having one attack is really really rough fleet lieutenant helps us here um, but we're really suffering from some low attack units here none of these things trade particularly well Sarna opted to use Mon Mothma to fill hand rather than C-3PO, which could potentially fill more cards, So, and also has a 4 toughness. So I think like that's a real consideration. We're going to get into the list that I've been running at the end of the video, but like one of the things that I believe about lists is like you should play what you think is good and just like use lists like mine or Sarna's as a starting point and just make your own decisions. It's going to make you feel more comfortable when you actually play the deck. Um, but this is pretty standard rebel stuff. Like these are all rebels are going to make fleet lieutenant better. That's why uh, the exclusion of wing leader was so stark to me when I took a look at the list. Um, if these guys trading so badly is what makes you know wing leader and fleet lieutenant better. But I still think like this is too much one power stuff. Um, there's just not enough damage that these guys are going to do throughout the game. And that even if we're chipping away, I call it chip damage. Like when we just put, like I'll often just throw Mon Mothma or R2 into like Sabine to do one damage. Then if they attack, my Kanan kills her. And if they add, uh, if they have a metal ceremony, my, um, my takedown still gets her. But um, we're going to add in space to this conversation because this is all that's in the deck for early game space. And as good as Star Viper and Bright Hope are, I don't think it's enough. Um, and I think that the two one power one drops just like aren't where it's at. So I cut one and the the slide here is going to take away Mon Mothma. I've actually been running Mothma. I had gone to R2 for a little while. This is a really tough decision. R2 costing one means that on turn five, which like this deck has no five drops, you can play R2 and still take down. Um, which I really, really love. It's got four defense instead of three defense, which is what Mod Mothma has. R2 is never going to draw you a card, but it does fix your draws. Again, I've been running Mon Mothma more, but I still think that these are just a consideration that you need to make and figure out what you like best. Um, when I started making these slides, I liked R2, and then when I went to record, I liked Mon Mothma, but I didn't think it was worth changing the slides just because the, the decision is so close that I don't think it matters. But what I did add, and like I, I'm, I talked to Sarna about the list, and he is not a fan of Arc because it has two power. But this is the same dude that's playing all one power, two drops on the ground. So I don't necessarily understand that argument, um, because we're like not only does this thing have restore, and like look at our three drops and two drops, like the three of them have restore. This is really good. So many of my opponents, especially my Sabine opponents, have said that like they can't believe how much restore is in this deck, and. Let's take a look at like why I like the Restored Arc. All right, this is pretty basic, but I still think it might be worth going over because of the resistance that people have had to the Arc. Um, if we're going first and we play an Arc and our opponent plays an A-Wing, like one of the absolute best starts they can have in an aggro deck, we're winning that trade. Our Arc can hit the A-Wing, we restore one, they take two, we take one. If They basically have to kill our Arc and trade it, for their A-Wing. Otherwise, next turn we can do the same thing and our arc doesn't die. All right, I've been meaning to make a whole video about this guy, but Fleet Lieutenant is basically like the most important unit in hero cards. He's amazing. And the very first game I watched of Sarnas at that Polish tournament, and I watched him use Fleet Lieutenant uh, while playing him with Chewbacca as a Sentinel to kill something and then force his opponent to get blocked by the Lieutenant. It was just 
a master stroke of beauty. But with so many rebels in the deck, you know, there's Fleet Lieutenant's little brother, Wing Leader, needs to be in there. As we saw in the previous example, like creating, like using a dinky unit like Wing Leader to buff something really strong, and like you could buff any any of these rebel units, which our entire early game is rebel, and a lot of our late game is rebel, um, and then force like an A-Wing to, instead of hitting us for three or five or seven, go through the wing leader first. Like, that's just incredible. It lets us control whatever other arena we need to um, with the experience tokens while also blocking an important strike in space. I think this was a, a huge omission from the list and one that I've added and have absolutely loved. Okay, so I mentioned I wanted to say a little bit more about ECL. I can't believe I have to keep having the ECL versus 30-point base conversation, but here it is. ECL saves you a lot more than five damage in the course of a game. By using ECL with things like Star Viper or an Echo Base Defender, we're able to kill their turn one play without dying back, usually, uh, especially with the Star Viper, and prevent them from doing things like playing their own fleet lieutenants and wing leaders to put the game up, potentially out of reach either damage-wise or unit health-wise. Without energy conversion lab like star viper and canaan are actually pretty bad like i would consider cutting the canons maybe altogether if i didn't have ecl in my deck the the heal is great but you know and five attack is great but there's still a lot of good ways to deal with canaan force choke waylay uh takedown there's just so many things that will get us before he heals and in these aggro matchups healing even just a couple is huge so i really want ecl for these and then it also lets us add other things that are also really slow in some matchups that basically we'd only play with ecl similar to kanan and one i've added in my list is wedge we don't have a ton of ships but giving more of our ships ambush and plus one plus one uh, is really, really good, and um, I only play it as a one-of. You can pull it with Mon Mothma. It's 5-5 it's five, five is decent with ECL, but like we're not playing in a whole game around it. But there are there have been several games where I you know, I drop the home one with Ambush, and I'm restoring two, plus maybe I'm buffing it by pulling a Wing Leader out of the discard pile or attacking with something else uh, by pulling Fleet Lieutenant out of the discard pile, and all of a sudden I'm cracking for like, 13 damage and healing five like it's a huge blowout so wedge has blowout potential in this deck and um ecl only makes them better because instead of just like dropping them as a slow five five we might actually use the ambush to kill something all right now we've gotten to the big boys rogue squadron skirmisher is a four six ambush is perfectly fine but against so many matchups getting that two drop back maybe you grab a mon mothma because you haven't found luke or home one yet uh, maybe you grab a battlefield marine when it's late in the game and your opponent keeps super laser blasting you and you just want to build your board back up um, he's great in all accounts uh, that four attack it doesn't kill a ton but as i mentioned in some of the earlier slides like we're looking to do chip damage um, making sure we hit uh, big booty units with a little of our low attack guys so things like rogue squadron and skirmisher and luke skywalker can really clean up the board when they hit uh u-wing reinforcement this isn't the best u-wing reinforcement deck um you know a lot of times we're pulling bright hope echo base defender there have been a couple times though where i'm pulling um uh akbar and then two two drops to maybe uh use akbar's ability to take something big off the board that's one situation where i think r2 gets a little bit better than mon mothma because you can actually go three three one you could drop like an echo base defender r2 and akbar or maybe drop like a star viper r2 and akbar and that gets really good home one needs no introduction this is like a premier legendary for green hero it's really good in this deck um, again with the inclusion of wing leader in my list you know, being able to drop the home one and pull wing leader back to buff something. Uh, I really love pulling fleet lieutenant back to attack with something and restore right away. I've closed out games with home one. And again, it's the, you know, having more of these against control after they've taken control of the game. Things like U-Wing reinforcement, Rogue Squadron, Skirmisher, and home one really help, you know, shore up that game and let us continue to push by dropping two units. Makes it much harder for them to do something like you know, power the dark side and kill our big play, which is exactly what Control wants to do. And I've actually seen a lot of comments in Discord and on Facebook that, you know, uh, they didn't think this deck would be so good in Control, and actually some people still think it isn't, and I'll just tell you straight off that that's wrong because of the package that we see on the board right here.
All right, here we have our very tiny removal event package. Um, you know, Sarna had three of each of these. I never run three make an opening unless it's post board against Boba Fett. Um, three takedown is great. I was trying two and two with Vanquish, uh, but really I, I've settled on going more takedown and fewer Vanquish. And as much as I like these cards and think that they're great, um, I think nine is just too many for that part of the game. Like our whole game plan is to drop Sentinels and, and win combats. And, um, you know, I want to lean into that a little bit more by shaving the event package. All right, I want to talk a little bit about how to play Chewy and why this Electro Staff is so good. Um, a lot of units, you know, a lot of leaders, they want to um, come out a little bit later in the turn once you've felt things out. But with Sentinel and Grit, like most of the time, I think the smartest play is to deploy Chewy right away. By that point in the game, we probably have at least a Luke or a U Wing, maybe both. Uh, maybe we have Vanquish and the Electro Staff. Seeing how our opponent reacts to Grit. Uh, sorry, to Sentinel on the ground is really important for us to plan the, the next parts of our turn. Um, you know, you're not going to auto flip them. Like, obviously, have a brain and think about what your opponent's going to do. If you have to get a kill in space before you flip Chewbacca, like, you should obviously do that. But um, uh, that nine booty is so tough to deal with that it's really great to see how our opponent is going to deal with it. So that's why I like flipping Chewie really early in the turn. And doing things like reacting with a um, U-Wing to maybe like drop a bunch of damage with Akbar. You can actually use Akbar to do damage to Chewie so that he can hit into the base for a lot. Like that's a good way to get a sneaky kill. Um, a lot of times it's just they work really hard to kill him and we drop Luke and, uh, you know, take something out rather than cracking back with Chewie. Chewie can attack the base. But I definitely recommend when you get to the Chewbacca flip turn, Flipping him early and figuring out what the best way to maneuver around how your opponent's going to deal with him. The other thing I'll say about Electro Staff is even though I only have two, Sarna started with three. Uh, don't sleep on putting two of these on Chewie. One is great. Two is absolutely insane. Um, in the games when I was playing with three Electro Staff and I got two out, uh, it was absolutely bonkers. But I took one out and I found that it hasn't changed my win percentage at all. Um, in the matches, it's good. It's great. Um, and if you really want a third one, you could absolutely fit into the sideboard. All right, and now the part you've all skipped to, my list. Uh, so here's the list I've been running. Um, again, it's almost completely based, I mean, it is based off Sarna's list. It's not that much different. But I've made some significant changes in terms of ECL, uh, adding a wedge, shaving some of the event package, adding wing leader, adding Yoda to the main deck. Um, I haven't really talked about Yoda yet, but the Restore 2 is great, but being able to drop a four health Sentinel that draws a card when he's killed is such a good stabilization tactic. And a lot of times you can make it, um, so you do it maybe after they attack once. If you really want the Restore uh, to get online, you can drop it after and, it, and they don't kill him right away. Sometimes their boards just can't deal with four HP Sentinel. So he was just an auto-include. I actually played him as a three of, but this deck, when it's fully maxed out on threes, has like 17 or 18 three drops. It's just too many. So we had to cut some. Um, and, you know, Akbar two of, Yoda two of with three Echo Base Defender, three Star Viper, three Free Lieutenant, two Wing Leader, two Make an Opening. Um, I think that's the right number. The only other thing... I did to the main deck was add the arcs, as I said, in the ECL. Uh, we could talk about the sideboard here. Um, you know, I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, but I've only lost four games total with this deck, two to word of Sabine, and both I didn't hit a two drop. So I added the R2s in the board. And again, you might want to run R2s main and Mon Mothmas in the board. You might want to run uh, R2s main and swap the Mothmas for Yularen, Rebel Pathfinder. I don't think it really matters what you do, but I do want three two drops in the board. Confiscates in there for lightsabers, shields, all really, really good against us. Uh, traitorous can be really good against us because we don't have big units that um, that dominate smaller ones. Uh, the third make an opening is really just for Boba Fett because it's so good there. Vanquish, pretty good catch all against, you know, I mean, literally everything that's non leader. Uh, against control matchups, we add our third home one and a reinforcement walker. But again, this list, still very similar to Sarna's. He gets all the credit. All I'm doing is adding what I think are some pretty obvious includes with Yoda, Wing Leader, Arc, and Energy Conversion Lab, and giving you a sideboard. And I know you all want it, a sideboard plan. I've included a lot of the meta here. Um, it's not obviously not every deck, but 
Um, it gives us a good idea of what to do in these matchups. Um, one of the things I've been recommending to people new to sideboarding is to just do a bunch of two ofs. Um, and I tried to stick to that a little bit, uh, but I couldn't do it all the way through. It's just not how I work. But um, as you can see here, um, I've outlined pretty much all of the major matchups that I think you'll face. The Boba Fett one is probably the biggest question mark because you have to kind of sniff out if they have traitors or not. Um, you're deciding out Yoda in almost every matchup except aggro, which, you know, makes it sort of validated that Sarna had it in his sideboard. But I just think it's too, like aggro's too good. And if you stumble against aggro, uh, you lose. So um, I've added it in the main deck. You know, speaking of aggro, like we cut some of the slower stuff, like Electro Staff, Wedge, Home One, things that like aren't coming out till later in the game. And we're adding three of whatever two drop we have in our sideboard or R2, which I'm considering a two drop. And we add uh, the third make an opening. I don't think we need anything else in there. And like the make an opening is, isn't even that amazing, but it's really good with chip damage to make sure that we kill something and heal. So that's really good. The confiscates are really good in the two uh, equipment heavy decks, the Grand Inquisitor, Chirrut, Darth Vader, and Luke Skywalker. And um, you, you might even bring it in if your opponent is playing um, Traitorous in their control matchups uh, over on the right. I didn't include it on the sideboard plane. You'd have to know if they were playing Traitorous, but it can also just be good against, like, Ident Shield. Anyway, you, like, these are a template. You can follow them religiously if you want, but I would definitely make your own decisions and try and figure out what's best. All right, I hope you enjoyed the deck tech. I uh, hope you learned a lot. Please uh, ask in the comments if you have any questions, thoughts, reactions. Hit me up on Discord, whatever. And uh, yeah, check you next time.